Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Alex and today I will teach you how to quickly and easily get any new primes that get released or as a matter of fact any currently unvaulted prime warframes or weapons. In this video we will go over the fastest way to obtain certain relics, the builds and how to run fissures efficiently. Ok so, you see this little website called Warframe Market? I want you to write what you want and just buy it. Ok I think these market jokes are getting old, I'm sorry. You probably know that there is different types of relics in Warframe. This Meso, Neo and Axie, and you get them from different sources in the game. You might have a lot of Lith and Meso relics since they are the most common, but once the new primes drop you will have zero relics for the desired item, so listen up. The best mission for farming Lith relics is Hepit on Void. This is a quick capture mission that can be done under 30 seconds if played right, so depending on your loading screens you can stack up on relics really fast. The frame we choose for going fast is Titania. This build is made for exterminate and capture, since capture has a chance to turn to exterminate sometimes, so you want to be prepared for that too. Or you could just abort in case that happens. But no, we are all about efficiency on this channel. Build for high efficiency, not too low duration, since it's basically efficiency number 2 on frames that drain energy. Then we have good range and decent strength for our thermal thunder, which will be our subzoom for today. This destroys starshard enemies with just one cast. Also one thing you should do is revert the Thermal Sunder cast option so you get the heat damage on click so you can cast it faster. Heat not only does double damage on the ability but it also is just a better status than called in this scenario. Rest of the build you just want to make sure to have Razor Wing Blitz for the movement speed and Preparation plus Prime Flow for the sustain. Also remember that the Razor Wing Blitz speed scales from strength so you might be tempted to go more strength to be faster but with too much you won't be able to control your character at all. Please don't go 3 million strength. For the Archon Shards, at least two orange for cast speed and the rest can be reds for ability strength. If you really want more speed, you can use Amalgam Serration, Amalgam Diffusion and Priados for the slide, speed and parkour velocity. If you are not using Prime Surefooted, use Unairu since it will give us the budget Prime Surefooted effect. This build is absolutely brainless, literally just fly around and spam 3 as much as your energy allows you to. You will most of the time just be chilling at extraction to be honest, just waiting for your teammates to make an appearance. It's also worth mentioning that you double the void traces gained with a resource booster. But I assume that everyone already plays with a resource booster active, like how could you not? Ayo! Worth the wait. Next up we got a mission that will be giving us uh, Meso and Neo relics. Uko on void once more. This is the same type of capture but with just a bit higher level enemies. So same mission type, same strategy, etc. I also forgot to mention that these two have a 100% chance to drop a relic or Aya. And well, Aya is a relic basically, which you might not want at the time of farming a new frame, but it is what it is. Both of the missions should be done solo or duo with a capable friend, otherwise it will be way too slow. Now we got Axie relics, this is where it gets harder. The best node here is Apollo on Lua. This is a disruption node so you might need some setup especially if you plan to do it on the steel path to get extra steel essence on top of the relics. So here I have a build that is fast, does massive damage and doesn't die. Would you look at that, it's Neza, who could have guessed? Prioritize strength and duration. Ignore range because it's not really doing anything in this build and keep efficiency at 75 for the sake of not randomly running out of energy and dying to high level enemies. Now we got the Flamewalker and Rush for going fast, Fiber for survivability, it boosts our third ability's shield, Equilibrium for better sustain, and Brief Respite plus Catalyzing Shields combo for old school shield gating. And on top of all we got Rolling Guard making us literally invincible. Molt Augmented for more strength and Arcane Energize for even more sustain. And lastly for damage we got Neza's second ability giving us an insane damage multiplier and our subzoom, Zata's Whisper, which will pair incredibly well with our secondary weapon. For the Archon Shards, 1-2 to two orange casting speed shards depending if it's Tau or not. I have the Strength Shards only because I have a Pillage build that requires a lot of Strength to use. Otherwise I'd go with 3 blue energy shards instead. Now the Demolist Killer, Lighton. We got the non-crit build, Viral Heat, some base damage and a Faction mod. Primary Deadhead for the juicy headshot multiplier and more base damage. And of course you can't play Lighton without a bit more fire rate. For the evolutions we got Fire Rate, Reload Speed, plus status chance minus crit chance and finally 2000% now you might be thinking but I like stream they have families why would you need to overkill a demolist 900 times how about you shut up and watch this and just to show you how stupid it is even without like any setup we got the glaive prime for killing fodder enemies these five are must have glaive mods 
Then we got some base damage and affection mod. Gladiator Might is a flex slot. And lastly, our status weapon, Bomba Nico. Uh, sorry, Bubo Nico. We use it to apply viral and call to the enemies. It's gonna apply so many AoE statuses that you could count it as a hard CC, to be honest. Other option is Viral Heat. If you want to make enemies suffer with million hit procs, builds are very similar, but here you just want to get high percent heat. For the school, either go for Xenoric for more sustain, or if you plan to go high level, use Unairu. Caustic Strike will be our armor strip. Now go, press some buttons and watch Demolish disappear. Preferably you should do it in a full pre-made group, since it will make it a lot faster if everyone is experienced. Disruption is not as simple as that, but just put the key in and run around trying to fight the Demolist. Never waited to conduit, especially because demos can actually get stuck and not move at all, and you definitely don't want to be literal AFK for 2 minutes. If your whole team is constantly putting keys and running around, one of you is certain to hear the beeping. Follow it and do your job. I'm showing you that you can forget half your kit and you will still overkill it on lower levels. Honorable mention to Railjack for gaining Axie Relics on the highest level Voidstorm Skirmish. You can get even more than one Axie Relic per run and crack a Relic while doing so. But the drawback is that you still can get zero. It's on you to decide if it's worth the RNG or not. There is a strategy you can check on how to be efficient with Railjack if that's something that interests you. I will leave the link in the description. Now let's talk about the passive income of Relics. From many syndicates they are obtainable for purchase with just standing. Some syndicates have a passive income, like the OG6. Whenever you are at max, you don't need anything else, you can purchase relic packs. Then there is some others, like one of the most popular ones, buying relic packs from Teshin with Steel Essence, the day new primes are released. With this method, you can be one of the first people to have it, so you could make a lot of platinum by selling it, for example, but then again, in my opinion, paying 15 Steel Essence to get 3 relics is a big waste, considering you can get that many relics in plus minus 3 minutes, including the loading screens, and you definitely can't get 15 Steel Essence in just 3 minutes. And now lastly, how to actually run fishers the fastest way possible. You should be looking for Exterminate, Capture Rescue, and most sabotages are okay. Exterminate being the best one since we have a build for it. Unless there is a fissure on Uko, Hepit or Apollo, know that these are the best nodes to actually do it on. You are cracking and possibly getting the exact relic you need. Now let's say you want to get Grendel Prime. You will want to do a rad share, so just write in chat H, Grendel Chassis, rad, for example. In case you have more people, just add 2 out of 4 or 3 out of 4 at the end. You could also write LF instead if you are lazy, but this option takes longer for sure. Never open these relics alone, if you have a small amount of them. Always gather a party that is willing to run the same Radiant Relic. This makes your chances as high as they can be. Now just run the relics, and I wish that all the RNG will be on your side. Bro, it's my 10th Radiant Relic! I'm gonna f- Just kidding, I got it in the end. That's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And I will catch you in the next one.